good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in San Diego. We're the daily podcast that gets you started on the right foot with what you need to know. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Friday, November 10th. Now let's see what's happening in San Diego and around the world. You'll be interested to know today is the Marine Corps birthday. It was created on November 10, 1921, by the U.S. government to show appreciation for the United States Marines. Having taken part in nearly every U.S. conflict, the Marine Corps has defended our country since America's inception. In other holiday news, we have Veterans Day coming this Monday. And there is only 14 more days until Thanksgiving. Now let's check out the weather and the tides in our area. It looks like we're in for some sun with a high near 74 and calm wind becoming west around 5 miles per hour in the afternoon. Tonight will be mostly clear with a low around 53 with north wind around 5 miles per hour becoming calm. Humidity will remain low. It is currently 49 degrees with 44% humidity. Also tonight, the sun will set at 4.50 p.m., and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.15 a.m. This weekend, expect a colder morning with Santa Ana conditions, featuring clear skies and dry air. Mountain and foothill winds may reach 25 miles per hour, with warmer afternoon temperatures due to offshore flow. The fire threat in Southern California remains high. Friday will be slightly cooler, and the weekend will warm up with a weak Santa Ana. Next week, a large storm system brings increased rain chances starting Wednesday. And today's microclimate temperatures are as follows. Coast, mid-70s, inland, near 80, mountains, low 60s, deserts, near 80. The first high tide today will be at 5.5 feet right around 6.50 a.m., with a half-foot low tide at 1.30. You can expect deep dawn patrol highs, modest midday lows, and deep evening highs for your general tide outlook. The nearshore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 62 degrees, so you can expect the water temperature to be low to mid-60s. Now here is a snapshot of the surf forecast from Surfline.com. A pair of back-to-back storms tracking across the Gulf of Alaska and into the Pacific Northwest set up a fun week of waves. As a result, a nice run of overlapping, shorter to mid-period west-northwest swell will show for the better exposures of Southern California through. The fun shot of west-northwest swell sets up widespread waste to stomach high plus surf for well-exposed spots while the better breaks in San Diego push chest to shoulder high. The trend towards smaller surf continues on Friday, with most spots down in the thigh to waist-high range. In the national weather, isolated thunderstorms and locally heavy rain are expected from southern Texas into the arc latex region through the morning and into the weekend for southern Texas and a series of Pacific storms will bring rain and high-elevation snow to the northwest into the weekend. The critical risk of wildfires over parts of Southern California is expected to diminish overnight. Let's switch over to transportation now and check out the planes, trains, and automobiles for a moment. At the airport, the new Terminal 1 is still under construction, so keep that in mind if you're flying today. The Pacific Surfliner looks fine in our area. However, there are no ticket windows currently in Solana Beach and Oceanside. So you'll need to use a kiosk or be using the app if you start out at one of those stations. There are no issues reported with the coaster. Now moving on to some of the biggest national news in sports from last night, I'll hand you off to Ace, our sports guru. Thanks, Melissa. Ace here. The National Rugby League is in discussions with FanDuel, a prominent U.S. betting company, to explore live streaming rugby matches on its platform. The NRL is planning to connect with an official U.S. wagering partner ahead of the Las Vegas doubleheader opening the season. FanDuel, 
worth $31 billion, is a favored candidate due to its scale and popularity among American bettors. This initiative aims to offer live match fees for U.S. sportsbooks, much like horse and greyhound racing regulators in Australia. The NRL is considering exclusive or multiple operator partnerships for market entry. Yowza! And now for some scores. On Thursday night football, the Bears beat the Panthers 16-13. In the NBA, the Pacers beat the Bucks 126-124. And in college football, number 11 ranked Louisville, playing at home, beat Virginia 31-24. In NHL scores, the Bruins beat the Islanders at home 5-2. The Canadians beat the Red Wings on the road 3-2 in overtime. The Kings lost to the Penguins at home 4-3. And the Sharks beat the Oilers at home 3-2. Tonight, we get the Wyoming Cowboys at the UNLV Running Rebels in college football. And in the NBA, the Celtics are at home against the Nets. The Clippers are at the Mavericks, and the Lakers are at the Suns. In national hockey tonight, the Flames are at the Maple Leafs. The Flyers are at the Ducks. And you can check out the rest of the schedule at yahoosports.com. The Major League Soccer playoffs continue tonight with the Seattle Sounders at FC Dallas. And that's all for sports. This podcast is brought to you by Socks Aplenty, a fun store located in any town USA. Spice up your sock game with our outrageous designs. From formal flamingos to sassy slogans, we've got your fee covered. Are you a mismatched sock lover? Try our mix and match mystery bags. Visit us today and never have a dull day or dull socks again. And now, on to the tech and science news. Researchers have figured out why sea stars and similar creatures have such strange body shapes. It turns out that they've lost most of their bodies over time, and what we thought of as their head is now their entire body. This discovery was made by studying the genes in a kind of sea star. Contrary to previous ideas, it seems that the part we thought of as their head stretches all the way to their arms. Even creatures that seem to have two sides, like sea cucumbers, are more like heads lying on their sides. We're still not sure why they evolved this way, but it's different from most other animals. And in more animal science, Chinese scientists have made a chimeric monkey with two sets of genetic material. This could help with medical research and protecting endangered species. They use stem cells from one kind of monkey and combine them with a different kind's embryo. This mix resulted in a live birth with a high percentage of the new cells throughout the body. While this could be useful for understanding diseases and preserving species, some people worry about the welfare of the animals used in this research. The term chimera originated from the monstrous hybrid creatures that populate Greek myths, but chimeric mice were first created in the 1960s and have been commonly used in biomedical research. In the U.S. stock market, stocks slide, snapping the longest win streak since 2021. China's largest bank, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China Financial Services just disclosed a ransomware attack that disrupted U.S. Treasury market trading. The New York-based company reported limited system impact, disconnecting affected parts, and assured the functionality of banking, email, and other systems. All Treasury and repo financing trades were successfully cleared. The incident is under investigation, with reports suggesting involvement of the Lockbit Ransomware Syndicate, known for its efficiency and global targeting since September 2019. In other news, Disney is up 14% over the last two weeks. And Viasat is having a strong week from a favorable earnings call. The stock was up 7% yesterday. And finally, Bitcoin sits at $36,670. Ethereum is up 10% from yesterday at 2,128, and a newer crypto, Rocket Pool, is up 20% in the last 24 hours. Now some news from around the U.S. The city of Chicago passed one of the nation's most expansive workers' time-off policies on Thursday, 
guaranteeing all workers at least 10 days off each year. And Tesla Motors recently received permission to break ground on a 1950s-style drive-in movie theater and diner, where the cinema parking comes with Tesla fast charging stations. The permits allow for 30-some charging stalls, two outdoor movie screens, and a restaurant with rooftop seating, all to be built on 7000 and 1W Santa Monica Boulevard in Los Angeles. And this week in San Diego, the Fleet Week Boat Parade will feature boats of all sizes decorated to salute and honor veterans and members of the U.S. military. The parade will take place on San Diego Bay on Veterans Day starting at 9.30 a.m. and proceed from Shelter Island under the beautiful skyline of downtown San Diego and work its way up to the Coronado Bridge where it will cross the bay and proceed south along the Coronado shoreline. There will be live demonstrations by the Coast Guard, as well as skydiving events, vintage aircraft flyovers, and other attractions on the bay. You can view the parade from the shore of Shelter Island, Harbor Island, San Diego Embarcadero, Seaport Village, and Coronado Tidelands Park. Well, alrighty, folks, it's Friday, and that's a relief. It's also time for the quote of the day. It's okay if every weekend doesn't lead to big moments and campfires and laughter that carries on for hours and hours. Some weekends might be quiet, still, with plenty of room to contemplate. And in that contemplation room, there is room to grow. In entertainment news, now that the writer's strike has ended, here is a look at what's on tap. Mission Impossible 8 is ready to start filming again as they are shooting for a May 2025 release date. Beetlejuice 2 should be out by next Halloween. And Academy Award-winning director Ridley Scott is getting back to work on Gladiator 2. I'm looking forward to that. But maybe the best news on this list is that Deadpool 3 will start filming again as it was paused midway through production and in music. Tracy Chapman's Fast Car won Song of the Year at the Country Music Awards, thanks to Luke Combs' cover song. Chapman, the first black songwriter to win, expressed gratitude for the recognition after 35 years. Combs also won Single of the Year and praised Chapman's original. The cover introduced new audiences to Chapman's music. Grammy Award nominations may include Chapman's Fast Car due to the cover's success. I love that song. Well, that's a wrap for this morning. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend, my friends. We'll be back next week with another Sunny Mornings podcast. Thanks for tuning in.